So I'd like to invite uh, Mayor Tom Stevens to uh, speak a few words. Thank you so much. Thank you very much and good afternoon. And I, I have always aspired to be the next best thing. So <laughs> I, um, uh, I, I am delighted to serve in the capacity of mayor uh, for this wonderful community uh, of Hillsborough. And it, it, it fills me with lots of joy because of events that I see here today. I see the festivities, I see the smiling faces, I see uh, the celebration. Um, and as mayor, I get to do this, you know. Uh, uh, and isn't that what it really is about? Um, you know, a few weeks ago, we got to do a celebration for the uh, topping for the hospital, which is very important to the community, it brings a lot of folks in. Uh, a week ago, I was with a, a friend of mine who had just literally closed on a brand new house. Uh, and now we're here today for the groundbreaking of this incredible new uh, temple and facility that you will have. And it is, I've seen the plans over there, it is spectacular. Uh, what the plans are uh, uh, to be a green facility, to uh, have room for, well, I understand, 800 folks. Uh, it is just uh, wonderful and something that I know you folks take great pride in. Uh, but I think all of Hillsborough and all of North Carolina uh, can take pride in too. I think there's some things that are universal um, when you see a smile on somebody's face, doesn't matter where you're from, anywhere on the planet, our brains are just wild. A smile connects us. There's always a connection among family and those who, you know, we, we share blood and, and homes with. There's connections among community when we come together. And there's connections that we have to the divine in and, and whatever way that we, we do that. And those things are universal, and I know you're very proud of the Nula Galeka community and just how much that you live your faith, your community, your families, and uh, smile upon uh, each other. So uh, it is a great honor to me to uh, share the stage here, to share this day with you and speak on the behalf of the uh, folks of Hillsborough. For those of you who are visiting here from uh, places outside of Hillsborough, welcome, 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 and you are always welcome. And for those of you who live here and make this part of your home, yes, congratulations. <laughs> Give yourself a hand. Now, from the so I want to thank the uh, mayor for his nice, nice talk and uh, welcoming everyone to Hillsborough. I actually want to describe why I'm here in Hillsborough, why the temple is here in Hillsborough, because people ask that question. Uh, some people the other day said, why don't you locate the temple in Cary? Anyone he here heard of Cary before? <laughs> but the problem with Cary, it's the containment area for relocated Yankees. <laughs> You've heard about that before? <laughs> and I don't know how much we want Yankees here. Of course. <laughs> Of course, originally, I was a Yankee. Not a member of the baseball team, of course. But originally, I came from a place called, let's see if I get the pronunciation right, Long Island. Is that right? Long Island. Long Island or Long Island? OK. And I've tried my best to uh, get rid of the New York accent so the people will accept me here. <laughs> So, uh, the reason we picked Hillsborough was quite interesting. I was looking at North Carolina and thinking, we need a Krishna Conscious Center here. Or, first let me describe what Krishna Consciousness is, for those of you who are not familiar. Krishna Consciousness is a science, as Jagat Purush Prabhu was saying, a science of the soul. And it deals not with sectarian religion, although there may be apparently some cultural aspects attached to it, like you see the dress, the dhoti, and the markings on the forehead. But it goes far beyond that. It goes to eternal principles. Uh, the word for eternal principles in Sanskrit is uh, dharma. Dharma means those principles that you can't separate from an object. I'll give you an example. Like the dharma of fire is heat. You just can't separate heat from a fire. So the dharma of all of us, whether you're a Hare Krishna, 
or whether you're a Hindu or whether you're a Muslim or whether you're Christian or Jewish or any of these other things. The Dharma is that we're all servants of God and God has various names in different religions and uh, we shouldn't divide ourselves according to those names. We shouldn't think that because someone has a different name for God, therefore they're a demon or a kafir or an infidel or whatever you may call them, but we're all brothers and sisters under God. God is the Supreme Father. And no matter what name it is or what name you have for him, we're all part of the same family. And that's Krishna consciousness, describing basically where you go at the time of death, where you come from, who God is. It's the postgraduate study of religion and doesn't negate any other religious scriptures or principles or descriptions. That's Krishna consciousness. And that's why I'm so enthusiastic to bring it to North Carolina, because it will bring people together. I see the world today, there are so many people fighting because of religion, because of race, because of nationality. We have all this bodily identification, isn't it? I am white, black, American, uh, Cuban, Russian, uh, Mexican, whatever, and all that divides us. So we want to bring ourselves together so we can work in harmony as one people under God, just like that's the motto in America. One nation under God, with liberty and justice for all, isn't it? And I think it still says on the American dollar, isn't it? it mentions God still, or did they take it off yet? It's still there, wow, fantastic. But who knows what they want to do in the future, you know, take God off of the dollar, take God off of the national anthem and all that other stuff. But anyway, so that's Krishna consciousness, and that's why I was enthusiastic to come here to North Carolina. Previously, I was in Miami, Florida, you know, the vacation spot for relocated Yankees. <laughs> and then, then I decided to come here because this is the one, one place in America that was lacking. And there's this area, whole area here between Winston-Salem, Greensboro, of course there's Hillsboro in the middle, Durham, uh, Chapel Hill, and then on the other side you have Raleigh. And sometimes we call this area Krishna's eyebrow. Krishna's eyebrow, interesting. That's interesting. She took the cue very nicely. Thank you. So, I wanted an, to set up a center here that was in the middle of Krishna's eyebrow. So what I did is I took compasses, a one compass, and I drew circles around all the major population areas of this part of North Carolina. And guess where they intersected? Hillsboro. So, in Hillsboro, we're within 45 minutes, maximum an hour, to about, I'd say, six to seven million people. So that's why we set up the center here. You know, people ask me all the time, I know our people in Charlotte, sometimes they ask me, why don't you set it up in Charlotte? But we're bigger than Charlotte. <laughs> Hillsboro's bigger than Charlotte. And to travel from one side of the city to Charlotte to another, how long does it take? Does anyone know? During rush hour. One hour, one to two hours. So we're closer than all the people are in Charlotte, right? So that's why Hillsborough is so great. And the temperature is great, the people are great, I mean, it's a fantastic place. So that's why, that's why I came here to North Carolina. And when we first came here, as Jagat Purush alluded to, uh, we didn't have much resources. Uh, basically, we had one or two old cars and, and the intelligence to buy a piece of land. We bought 16 acres, which is the present temple property across the street, and we didn't have any money to buy it. But because I was a real estate agent before and I knew how to buy property <laughs> without money, <laughs> don't, don't ask me how, it's a secret. We bought the property. And then, of course, within a year I had to get the money to pay for the property. But Hillsborough is such a friendly place 
that I walked into the bank, it was Central, Central Carolina Bank, and saw my friend uh, Mr. Riley. I don't remember Mr. Riley. From, he's one of the old people. He's since passed away. His son is doing some banking now. I saw him and I said, well, can you loan us the money? And he said, well, uh, I like you, so I'm going to loan the money. <laughs> That's Hillsborough. Nowadays, of course, many of the banks have been taken over by multinational corporations, so you really have to jump through hoops. But in those days, you know, it was on a handshake, people knew you, and it was a very nice relationship we had. And because of that, we were able to uh, pay off the property there and get two or three other properties and eventually get a loan for the property here and buy this property here. And all these properties are paid for. We're not under any debt in the properties that we have. Oh. Pretty good. And that's because Krishna wanted it. I basically... I didn't do anything. And when we wanted to build a temple there, the dome temple you see there, I just went to some of my friends in uh, Greensboro, the Gujarati community. Uh, my good friend who actually lives in Florida now, Dhirubhai Padgam, I, some of you may know him. And I said, well, we'd like to build a temple. And he said, okay, here's the money, build a temple. Pretty good. So Krishna wanted it. I've never made much endeavor for collecting money or for getting things together. It's just, I'm going with what Krishna wants. Because we know if one makes over endeavor in doing things in this world, you sort of lose your balance, lose your composure, and you lose your spiritual life. You know, if we become too much engrossed in money, 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 then we forget God, God, God. So it's better to remember God, and if God, God has all the money anyway, right? He's the richest. That's the quality. One of the qualities of God is he's the wealthiest person. And if he wants something, he'll pay for it. <laughs> so that's my attitude. That's my attitude with this temple here. That if God, Krishna, Krishna's a name for God. God has many names. Uh, Yala, Jehovah, Yahweh, the same person. If he wants this temple, he's going to pay for it. Of course, through all of you and through many of our members, We'll see what he wants. I'm not going to lose any sleep over it, and we're not going to push anyone to help with it, but we'll have to see. And uh, it appears to me that this temple has its own momentum, because I haven't been pushing it that much, and I'm happy to travel and preach, which most of my life is traveling. Like, uh, on Wednesday, I'm going to New Orleans. After that, I'm going to Europe. After that, I'm coming back here for Jamastami. After that, I'm going to the South Pacific again uh, to supervise some of our centers. So it's up to Krishna. And so we should all pray to Krishna that this temple will grow, go very, very quickly, or as quickly as he likes. And then we can worship the deities here and also introduce people to Krishna consciousness and serve as a member of this community in other ways too. I was explaining to the mayor we want to have as part of the facility a hall, a multi-purpose hall, that will be utilized by other members of the community for dramas, musical performances, that will draw in the whole community. There's a, a professional auditorium with all the electronic doodads. You can ask Diabir. I think Diabir is going to speak to us for a few seconds after this. But Diabir knows all the details about all the electronic, computerized stuff. And What's that? I'll finish in a second, don't worry. <laughs> oh, I see Prakash Bhai there. And Thakur Bhai. Sundar Gopal, wow. Some of our friends from Charlotte. So, uh, it's, we want to serve the whole community. It's not preaching, sectarian religionism. We want to bring the community together, serve the community, arts, yoga, all sorts of interesting things. and. Have people understand that religion is not a sectarian affair. It doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter how you call God. It simply means to devote yourself to the pleasure of God and to devote yourself to helping others, seeing everybody else as your brothers and sisters. So thank you very much, and thank you, Mayor, for your attention. I think this